All right. Hello, everyone. I am going to give us a few moments to kind of make sure everything's syncing up. Uh, I am running behind. Oh, I'm running really late today. I do apologize in advance, but I don't want anyone to miss out on this special treat that we have here with our special guest that's going to go over this uh, this hot topic of driver recruitment. So um, just giving a few moments here. I'm going to double check the group, but I do think we are finally live and cross streaming. So tell your friends it didn't get canceled. It just got postponed, but the information is coming and you can definitely um, watch us here in the group. I'm I'm trying to check in the group. I see that you guys are on here, but I don't see it myself in the group. So if you'll be nice enough for me, just say hello so I can kind of see where in the world this whole live thing is hiding <laughs> in the group. So if you'll do that for me, just say hello as you're entering into the room. That will help me kind of make sure everything is on and ready. Having a few technical difficulties. If you kind of been with me this past week, you know, that's the story of my life right now. So again, I apologize for these delays. But if you would just say hello as you're coming into the room, I'd greatly appreciate it. Just making sure that I can um, get this streamed over. I'm typing right now. All right. Okay. Let me see where this is. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let me update this. Let me make sure. Let's see where we are. Well, evidently. Okay, here we are. I found it. I found it. So thank you. Thank you so much as you're saying hello, as you're coming in, so I can kind of do my check. Now, without further ado, make sure my camera is all situated so y'all don't have to see my children's feet. <laughs> I am really having a tough time today, but uh, thank you for your forgiveness and let's get going. So I want to introduce you to our guest speaker, Ms. Jerry Banks of Life on the Road Recruiting. She is going to answer those hot button questions that we have about, okay, this is not going away. Hold on real quick. Hot button questions that we have in regards to getting drivers. There we go. I am finally up and going. Background noise. All right. So we'll have this done. I'm going to now bring her on the camera. Let her do the introduction. Let's get this show going. So thank you, Miss Jerry, for joining me. Hello. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. So um, I'm Miss Jerry with Life on the Road Recruiting. Uh, our agency, it is a full service truck driver recruiting agency. Um, we essentially help you with hiring drivers from, um, you know, from the recruitment process all the way to um, the driver being uh, seated in your trucks. So, um, hey, how y'all doing? I can see the comments coming in. I don't particularly see who they are. Um but we've been in business for five years um, in transportation. I've been in transportation in some form or fashion over the last 20 years. Um, a, a big chunk of my um, transportation background is in uh, private aviation. Um, I worked a lot with uh, governments, heads of state, clients that had their own aircraft, um, had ran a team of about 50 people. So uh, recruiting and um you know, hiring and things like that has always been a big part of my of, of my back, background. Five years ago, I moved it over to the trucking and transportation industry. Um, but I want to talk to you guys today um, about a couple of things, particularly uh, finding truck drivers. I know that, um, you know, that has been a huge, huge sore point for a lot of tr uh, trucking companies. Um, we talk to trucking companies daily. I just got off the phone with another one that um, is having some challenges and um, just needs some guidance. So, um 
we created uh, what I called Life on the Road Recruiting University um, a short while ago. And um, uh, last year, actually, we created our university where we train, you know, individuals that want to get in trucking and not on a truck um, to get into the truck driver recruiting industry. It is a very lucrative industry. So we have that side of it. And we also have our educational side where we educate our carriers um, on how they can uh, go out and source their own drivers. You don't have to, I don't want you to need me. I want you to be able to, you know, build your pipeline of drivers and uh, be able to source your own truck drivers and know the questions that you need to ask, know the steps that you need to take um, and where to find your truck drivers. Um, Right now, driver hiring is on the rise. OK, so the stimulus packages are drying up. The, um, you know, the, the sign on bonuses are starting to decrease with these companies. The unemployment is, you know, starting to to. Um, you know, expire. Um, the the federal government has kind of like uh, made some changes. So, you know, people are getting back to work. So now is the time. Thank you so much for a lot of for putting those links up. Now is the time um, to hire your truck drivers, get get good quality drivers in, in, in the seats of your trucks. Um, has there been a driver shortage? There is a driver shortage to a certain degree, okay? Hey, Latasha, how you doing? I can see names now. Um, there's a driver shortage to an extent, to a degree, okay? You got on one aspect, you got um, drivers that may not qualify for your insurance requirements. On another aspect, you got drivers that, um, you know, can qualify, but they got, you know, 15, 20 different options, you know, at their, um, at their um, their beck and call. They got 15 different companies calling them all day long about opportunities. And those are the drivers that you want, but you need to know uh, what you need to be, be doing as an organization, as a company to get those quality drivers. Um, and then on a whole nother note, there are um, 80,000 drivers, okay? 80,000 drivers that um, since last year, January 2020, have gone through the SAP program, the substance abuse program, um, because they have a violation in the drug and alcohol clearinghouse. Now, is that taking some drivers out? Yes, that is. Um, are there companies that will hire those drivers? Absolutely. I work with a lot of them. Um, are there companies that won't? Yes. Heck yeah. There's a lot of companies. Um, and so it, it just depends on your company requirements. What um, And a lot of companies don't really understand that program. Um, yes, 80,000 drivers have gone through the SAP program. So there's so many companies that don't understand the process and the program. But the companies that do and that take that extra step to understand it, know what they need to do, know how it affects their carrier, their um, their uh, you know, if it affects their safety rating, which it doesn't, um, if it affects their insurance, which it doesn't. So there's a lot of carriers that are kind of, you know, steering it clear of that. But um, there's some things that you need to know. And we do a lot of educating on our YouTube channel about the um, SAP program if you're interested in hiring some of those drivers. Some of those drivers, I will tell you guys, are the most loyal drivers, Um a year later, we still have drivers that um, are still with their carriers because they ain't going nowhere. OK, they need that job. There's not a lot of opportunities out there for them. So that's one thing that I want you to consider as well. Um, but like I said, more and more drivers are getting back to work. Companies are starting to decrease everything. Our phones are ringing off the hook. OK, and if yours aren't, there's some things that you're not doing right to get drivers in seats. Um, so I want to talk to you about a survey um, that was done uh, between April and May of 2021. All right. So this survey was done by the PDA, the Professional Driver Agency um, and Conversions. And so they did this survey um, over 16,000 drivers. And I want to talk about how to market in today's um, climate and how to position your job offer. So that survey said 
stood out to me the most because it said there's three things, like I said, that stood out. And so the three things that are attracting drivers today, the first and foremost is the home time. OK, so the majority of small carriers, their drivers have to be out two to three weeks at a time, usually to, um, you know, to turn a profit. So what I recommend when you have, um, you know, your carrier, your operation, it needs to be out. Driver needs to be out two to three weeks at a time. Home time is a big deal to drivers right now, especially after COVID, coming off of COVID and things like that. You want, hey, Ava Nicole, you want to uh, make sure that you're getting the driver through the house. I don't know if that is um, if that is sitting down with your dispatcher and looking to see what is in the region so that maybe the driver can get through the house for a break during the week at some point. Um, but home time is crucial. OK, that was like the number one thing that the drivers look at when they're choosing a company to go and work for. And you got to keep in mind, um, drivers are always looking for jobs. OK, they're always looking. Um, and let me let me rephrase that. They're not always looking, but they're always willing to listen to an opportunity to see if it's a better opportunity for them. So. Just know that they might have a job already, but if your opportunity presents something that is better, they're going to give it a consideration. They're going to think about it. Um, and then that's when you are um, able to to swoop in and, and get them over to your carrier. But when you get them over, you got to make sure that you take care of them. OK, um, so another thing with regards to home time, like I said, give it your dispatcher, you know, see if you can keep the driver in a region. A driver doesn't have to always be, you know, going from New York to California every single week. There's loads in your region. There's plenty, plenty of loads everywhere. So if you can offer that where they're getting through the house, that's a great opportunity for a driver. Um, so get creative with your trip planning. All right. Um, next is the number two thing that was on the, the survey that I wanted to share with you guys was weekly pay guarantee. And I've talked to so many carriers that do not even know what a weekly pay guarantee is. And basically what that is, that says to the driver that we, no matter what you run, as long as you're available for this many days, your, your, your full clock for that particular week, we want to guarantee that you will make no less than whatever that amount is. Usually carriers will say no less than, you know, $1,400, no less than $1,500. Um, and, and we work with, hey, Leonard, how you doing? Uh, we work with large carriers and we work with small carriers. So a lot of our large carriers, they might say $1,300. Um, they might say $1,200. It's a minimum. Keep in mind, it's a minimum. That, like, that's the minimum that they will ever make. Um, now, of course, the sky's the limit depending on what they run. But um, the minimum is what they agree to. Now, the other thing is you want to make sure that whatever you say, whatever you guys come to an agreement with, that it is in an offer letter. OK, we call that a conditional offer letter. Don't just I, I've seen so many carriers that will you know hire a driver and then they um set up the you know transportation whatever and then they put them in the truck and then they're gone no you want to align your count your company with what the big carriers are doing because um the driver's accustomed to that they're accustomed to a certain standard because they've gone through the bigger carriers. They worked with the bigger carriers. They know what orientation looks like. They know what, you know, getting a conditional letter looks like, um, things like that. So that's how you align yourself with the larger carriers. Um, a weekly pay guarantee is so, so big right now. Um, there's different you know, levels. There's, you know, flat rate pay. There's minimum mileage pay. Um, you, when you offer a minimum pay guarantee, you essentially set yourself apart from that carrier that the driver has no consistency 
They don't know, you know, if they're going to make $800 this week or if they're going to make, you know, a thousand or twelve hundred. There's there has to be some type of consistency, and drivers need consistency. Um, that's very very important. So what we did was, if you take a look at our YouTube channel, it's Life on the Road Recruiting. There's a full video where I talk all about pay guarantee. If you want to know more about uh, pay guarantee, thank you, Lada. You're awesome. Uh, if you want to know more about pay guarantee and you know how you can incorporate it into your business model. If it's something that, you know, might work for your company, um, definitely, definitely take a look at that YouTube video. It's going to give you a lot of insight. Um, the last thing that I wanted to share, it's a, it's a very long survey and I can drop the link to the survey um, in the comments so you guys can take a little a, a look at it in more detail. But the third thing that um, drivers are looking for uh, thing, and things that attract drivers is the equipment quality. OK, so they're wanting to know that your truck isn't going to break down. OK, that, um, you know, it's it's a it's a nice truck. You know, they can pull it in their neighborhood on their break, their home time. And it ain't, you know, the wheels ain't falling off. Wires ain't hanging all down. Um, the the everybody in the neighborhood on the street talking about them with their raggedy truck. Um, so equipment quality is very, very important. Um, so when you're when you're putting your offer together, you want to be able to share, hey, look, we got a 2000, um, you know, 20 Freightliner Cascadia automatic is fully loaded. You got the inverter is, you know, it's already in there and everything is set up. You got a fridge, you got a microwave. I have a client that has a PlayStation in the truck for the driver. So when they're sitting at the, at the shipper and they're delayed two hours, he can play 2K. All right. So that is those are, like I said, some of the things that set you apart. And we're going to talk about um, I need a whole nother show, Lada, to talk about job postings and, and, and things like that. But I'm going to talk about two of the top two methods um, that we use. OK, um, we use for recruiting. So finding our drivers. All right. These are some of the top ways that we find our drivers. Is it on um, Indeed, Craigslist, Monster, ZipRecruiter, all of those places? No, I haven't posted to a job board in about, uh, well, I'll take that back. I did post to Craigslist about two or three weeks ago, but I do Craigslist with a twist. And I'll tell you guys about that um, as well. So our top location that we um, our top places that we use to source our drivers is through uh, social media. OK, so think about it when the number one place where drivers are on social media is Facebook and YouTube. OK, Facebook and YouTube is king for us finding and sourcing our drivers. Um, and, and it's a mix of things. OK, uh, again, it's a whole nother class that you that we need, but I'll go in touch on the, the very high point. So think about it when a driver is, you know, they're they're on their 10 hour break. The only thing that they're doing um, and they probably shouldn't be. OK, but the only thing that they're doing is they're in the back in that cab um, in their sleep of birth, and they are scrolling through social media. Okay. They're scrolling. All right. And guess who, guess what? They going to see me. Okay. They're going to see my team when they're scrolling through social media and they might not be looking for a job at that point, but when they are, they're going to remember us. All right. Because we are engaging. We are engaging. We are um, liking. We're following. We're commenting. We are. And, and here's the thing. When, for example, um, if you comment on a driver's post or if you are communicating um, with a driver or like it or whatever, just me in general, you know, on my personal page, if I comment on somebody's post or somebody comments on my post, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on their profile and I'm going to go see who they are and what they do. 
All right. That is probably the number one way that we we get our drivers. We communicate, we engage, and then we have a profile, our profile. Yes, they look you up. So we have our profile set up so that drivers know, hey, look, we're hiring. We got jobs. Whatever kind of job you want, local, regional, over the road, we got it for you, okay? Um, and so you as a carrier, you need to ensure that your profile is set up that the driver knows that you have opportunities. They need to know what kind of opportunities are out there for you, uh, for them. Um, so Facebook is a big one. Facebook also has something that I really, really like um, and have hired drivers also as well is um, their job market. Um, their marketplace for jobs. And so um, we do hire from from that as well. We post our jobs. Um, it's the Facebook marketplace jobs. And so when you post a job on Facebook marketplace, it's going to blast to everybody in that particular area that you selected. Um, that's another good one. Um, number two, I talked about Facebook. I want to also talk about YouTube. Um, because YouTube, again, in the survey, um, and I'll share the link with Lada, but in the survey, dr when drivers were asked where the, the top you know, few places that they're spending their time and find their trucking industry information, it's YouTube, Facebook, and then trucking podcasts. OK, so if you are if you have, you know, know of a popular pod podcast, reach out, see if you can advertise, see if you can advertise. Yes. Truck and hustle. See if you can advertise on that podcast. Let everybody know that you're hiring because that's how you get out there. That's how you um, that's how you set yourself apart from everyone else that's hiring. Because let me tell you something. It's so many people out there, y'all, that are hiring. It's so many companies, new startup companies, um, you know, people that are just going to buy a truck. You know, the drivers have options. All right. And so you have to be a differentiator. You have to set yourself apart from everybody else because if everybody else is doing it, you just like, you know, in there with everybody else. You want to be different. You want to stand out. Um, another place is, uh, yes, great. Thanks for sharing that, Ramel Wadley. Um, another place is um, TikTok. OK, so we recently just got on TikTok maybe a few months ago, but I will say so I had a TikTok video and it because TikTok is fun. Y'all, OK, it, it is fun. And the one thing about YouTube, Facebook and TikTok, um, these social media platforms and I there are drivers on Instagram. Y'all, I'm not going to leave out Instagram. Um, yes, me and do love TikTok more. Uh, I'm not going to leave out Instagram, but I've found that Instagram, the majority of the people, the Instagram, yes, your 20 year old drivers and, and, you know, the younger ones are on Instagram. But a lot of Instagram trucking industry people are um, companies, they're carriers, you know, so that's where we, you know, do a lot, a lot of our uh, communicating with our carriers on Instagram. Um, but TikTok, I want to go back to TikTok because I did a TikTok video about a uh, family, a family dollar uh, account that we have on the East Coast paying about two thousand dollars a week. So I did a TikTok video on that. That video got over five thousand views. OK. And just like the course of a week and the comments were just like through the roof. The calls were crazy. And um, I did not want to do TikTok. My daughter encouraged me to do TikTok because, you know, she's like this influencer on TikTok. And I'm like, oh, this is for the kids. And I, that's all I thought it was for was for the kids. But like I've gone on TikTok and it's a lot of information on there. So these these social media platforms one, number one, is that they're free. OK, they are absolutely free. And because I haven't even got into any of the paid, um, you know, advertisement, the, the, the Facebook paid advertisement is a little bit different because of the um, special ad category that you have to do when, you know, you're you're um, hiring uh, when it's a job 
ad simply because Facebook doesn't want you to discriminate or, you know, um, you know, single out people and things like that. So there's a lot of different ways that you have to do. Now, we don't, I know I've heard people say boost posts. Um, we don't boost posts um, at all um, simply because I've met with the Facebook. Um, yes. Yes. Hiring is it's a whole process. Yes. I need more time. I do. Um, yeah. So we'll have to talk about boosting posts in, a, in another one, but I don't, bo I don't boost posts. And um, I've met with Facebook, um, you know, the Facebook uh, marketing team. And, you know, they've given me a lot of really good pointers and things that really worked. And boosting posts wasn't one of them um, as far as uh, as far as Facebook, our Facebook page goes. But YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Look, you have to get out there um, because it builds trust. Like I have drivers that will call me from YouTube and say, you know, Miss Jerry, I feel like I've been knowing you all my life because, you know, I don't watch five of your videos. And, you know, it's, it's you know, it's a great conversation. I'm like I ain't even talking to you. OK, uh, but yes, the videos build trust and they just, you know, they feel like they know um, they know you. And so. um so social media is, like I said, number one in our methods of recruiting truck drivers. That's like number one. My phone rings off the hook just from social media. Um, the next thing is text blasting. So we use a text messaging software and um, I'll share. I have a, a whole um um, what do I call it? It's a top seven ways that we use to find truck drivers, plus like a lot of the offer letter, um, like a lot of other things that I'll talk about here in just a bit. But um, our texting software is very effective. Um, we do have a database, um, you know, and when you get a driver's name, their phone number, their email address, you want to put that in a spreadsheet, put it somewhere where you're saving that information um, and, and being able to go back to that so that you can build a pipeline, build a database of drivers. Because, you know, maybe you only have one truck now, but you might have 10 in a year. And what about all those drivers that you um, that you uh, um, had in your in your uh, system? So it's a legal requirement. Yes, it is a legal requirement. You do have to, you know, the drivers do have to opt in. There is a, and I'll share with you guys, um, I have it on my digital product, but I'll share it with you. There is a company, it's called um, DM Databases, all right? And it's a, it's a, it's a company, uh, a database of drivers. So you can purchase driver information. And um, they have a list of drivers who have opted into text messages. They have a list of drivers who have opted into, you know, emails, things like that. And you'll have the driver's information where you can essentially go and text or go call, you know. Uh, but they have thousands and thousands of drivers. Yes, that's them. Uh, thousands and thousands of drivers that you can um, that you can reach out to. And once you get that, once you get that list. Um, and, and keep in mind that list is recycled. That list is recycled. There's a lot of drivers, but what what isn't recycled? OK, um, um, there there's a lot of the class A drivers. If you're using class A drivers, it's re, it's recycled information. You have to ensure that your offer is packaged it's, it's packaged well, that it's packaged um, and you have something that stands out. Um, so text blasting, that's another way. There's a couple of other um, things that we do call drops and things like that, that really works. But like I said, we've created a database over the years where we have about 60,000 drivers in our database. But we do, we do, we used to use email a lot. OK, two years ago, we used a lot of email blasting. Um, we probably send emails maybe once every other month. It's no one looks at their emails anymore as much. And the majority of drivers that I talk to tell me that they have 30 email addresses. And, you know, am I going to get the right one? So we, we, we try to strategically focus our efforts to what is working at the moment, what is working for this season of uh, driver recruiting. And so that's what carriers need to know. Um, 
things work well. And then when they don't, you have to pivot. So like, for example, if you're an Indeed person, if Indeed is working for you, wonderful. But when Indeed stops, you need to be able to pivot and transition to what is working um, right now. Video is key. Video is crucial in this industry because I would rather... um, Yes, stay on trend. I would rather um, go and work with a company that I can see and touch and feel in a video um, versus someone who I have no idea, have no no knowledge about. So, like I said, video is very, very crucial. Um, And then the last thing that I want to share from a finding driver's perspective is referrals. Okay, Uh, if you have other drivers in your fleet, other drivers on your team, a video, uh, um, a referral word of mouth, that is going to be huge because your drivers are your biggest ambassadors, your drivers. uh, And I'm going to I'm going to tell you guys about a a carrier and I'm sure you've seen them. um, But I really follow them a lot because I want to. know what they're doing so that I can align my business with exactly what they're doing as far in in a different way because I'm a recruiter. But um, there's a company out there and it's called Variant, B-A-R-I-A-N-T. And they are, they're like the the Ritz-Carlton of trucking, okay? Their drivers, it's like drink, they're like drinking some Kool-Aid or something because their drivers, exactly. Their drivers are so happy. They're telling other drivers. They have a driver ambassador program that um, basically if you bring on three drivers before, I think it's like August the 1st, you get a trip to Cancun, okay, with one other person. All right. Now, who else doing that out there? Okay. Um, So they are Variant, V-A-R-I-A-N-T, Variant. They are a sister company of U.S. Express, but they are totally trying to change the face of trucking when it comes to, they got some digital dispatch stuff. They got some you know technology that they're doing, but their driver ambassador program is what I'm so impressed with uh, because the yes, Drive Variant. So these drivers are out there spreading the good gospel about variants so that other drivers can come over and work for them. And so let me tell you a little bit about their program. So they have, they get the the Cancun trip, okay? If they bring one, let's say they bring one driver. One driver, they get $2,000. Two drivers, they get another $2,000. Three drivers, they get another $2,000. That's three. At the third one, they get a trip to Cancun and it's with the the owner of the company and some other, you know, important people are going to be there. Um, And then not only that, they get they are paying that driver that bought over two and three drivers they're paying them an extra two cents per mile that driver gets two cents per mile for every mile that that driver drives while they're employed so if they stay there for five years they add two cents per mile on top of what they already make and they pay pretty well as well Uh, But it's a W-2. Yes, treat them well and they're going to take care of you. And that's how you keep your drivers. Uh, But yes, referrals is very, very uh, key in um, in running a trucking company, because that's how that's how um, you get new drivers. Okay. Um, let's talk about qualifying. I, I, I know um, we started a few minutes late, but I know I'm getting to my um, because look, I'll talk all day long, y'all. I will talk all day long about um, recruiting these drivers and what you need to do to get them in the seats. And um, but we created a while back a, a method that we call uh, uh, the climb method. Okay, and so what the climb method is is it is Um, basically the C is connect, conversate, and qualify. Okay. So I'm going to go through each one. So basically with the C, it's basically you're connecting with the driver. I always believe, I'm a firm believer that you connect 
with a driver, anyone, anyone that you're dealing with, but particularly your drivers, your employees, you connect with them on a human level. You connect um, so that you can, you know, you want to know about their family. You want to know what they got going on. You don't want to know what, you know, how your career been so far. Where are you in your career? What, what are you looking for long term? So you connect because drivers are talkers. OK, they're going to tell you everything you need to know to form a good opinion about them and their work ethic and what they can bring to your organization. If they're a good fit for your culture, I don't care if you got one truck or if you got 10 trucks, okay? When you connect with a driver and conversate with them, you still, you want them to be a good fit for you. Don't just take anything because, you know, even though there's a shortage, there's still a lot of drivers out there that you can um, to choose from. So you want to be able to connect, conversate, and then move into qualify. So if there's someone that you feel like, you know, is a good fit, um, then you qualify. And so we created uh, a list of about 25 to 30 questions that we ask. We don't do we ask them all at once? No. But we have this list of questions that it's like our guide. It's like our Bible. Um, if a driver says this, then we're asking this. OK, so, for example, if a driver tells me um, one of the first questions I'm asking um, is, are you working right now? OK, that's like my very it's not the first one. You know, there's some other questions that I need to ask. But one of my very first question is, are you working? OK, and so if they depending on their answer that's going to guide me the rest of that conversation. Um, so, for example, if he says, you know, yes, I'm working, then my co my conversation is going to go into, OK, so, you know, how how's it going over there? You know, what kind of run you on? Um, what do you what do you like to run? Are they running you on what you like to run? Um, so I'm asking those kind of questions. How much you making? You know, what, what what's going on? So I'm formula I'm I'm listening because and I'm writing okay I'm listening and I'm writing and I'm sharing a lot of um you know understanding what, who they are what the, cuz every driver is different okay every driver is different and you need to treat treat them as such um and then on the other hand, if they say, no, I'm not working, well, then, you know, red lights start going off, the bells start ringing. Well, well, what happened? Well, when was the last time you worked? You know, when was the last time you was with a, a trucking company? Um, oh, it was about, you know, two months ago or whatever. Well, so why you leave? What happened? Because if something happened, okay? So if it was two months ago, you didn't just leave just to be leaving. All right? Something happened. You have to, yes, you have to ask those hard questions. And I'm, look, I'm a, uh, I'm, I, I get that old, that whole uh, mother hen thing going. So baby, what happened? Why, why you ain't with that company? And so, and it puts them at ease and it gets them to a level where they're okay with sharing, okay? Because they know that I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to help you get back in a truck. I'm trying to help you get some money. I know your wife crying because you ain't making no money and the bills need to be paid. Why you ain't working? What's going on? Um, and so then at that point, after I get, you know, start pulling that information out of them, then I'm asking, um, you know, the the wanting to know what what happened like what get digging into the details okay so you said you um you quit okay so tell me why you quit what happened what was going on and then two minutes later i done caught him in a lie and then then we're gonna get to the truth okay um and so it, and that's just natural that's just that's just, that it just happens. That that's how they sometimes you're not gonna get the truth, but you have to have a listening ear where you know how to get the truth, um, how to get the truth out. But um, and then I'll finally get out, you know, that they got fired. Okay. So then tell me what happened, why you got fired, was it an accident, was it safety? Um, you know, those sorts of things. And so that um really opens up the conversation because I'm asking questions and I'm also connecting and building trust. Okay. Um, 
So, yes, we have a whole list of qualifying questions that, you know, we ask, um, but I've kind of gone into the L as well. So listen and then line up the possibilities. So um, when we're listening, like I said, we're, we're asking questions, we're listening for understanding. All too often we try to listen um, and then be ready to answer to ask the next question or be ready to, you know, say something. But we have we really are as a recruiter, as someone that is, you know, um, hiring drivers, we're really listening to know where to go with that particular conversation. Because um, I want to know um, if they're going to be a right fit for what I have. So I'm asking where you've been running. Where do you like to run? What do you like to do? Um you know, that's that sort of thing. And then I'm getting into, you know, how's your driving record? You know, and I'm going to ask that question. I'm going to ask that driving record question, that that um, background question. I'm going to ask that about five different ways. OK. Um, and then it could be, you know, you you know, had in this, the standard question is you've got any tickets or accidents in like the last five years. Um, and then they say, no, we go on with the conversation. Then I'm going to ask. Um, so so tell me when I pull your MVR, when I pull your driving record, what's going to be on it? What am I going to see? Well, that's the same question I just asked a few minutes ago, but I asked it in a different way. All right. So it's just how you phrase your questions, how you word your questions. Um, and, and like Lada said in the comments, don't avoid the hard questions because you've got to ask those because you need to know if they're a fit for your company. Um, that's very, very important. Um, and so the the next part is the I. So we've gotten to the part where, you know, I've told the driver, I've lined up the possibilities. I've listened to everything. I've told the driver what I've got about my, my position. I got, you know, we talked about the home time, the pay, um, the lane and, you know, that sort of thing. I've answered any questions that they had about benefits, things like that. And then we're uh, inquiring about the next steps moving forward. So if I did my job correctly, telling them everything that they needed, answering all of their questions, then the driver is asking, okay, so what I need to do to apply where I got to go, what link I got to click on. I'm ready. I'm, I want to get started. Um, and so that's when uh, we start the whole application process. That's the I inquiring about the next steps and then, you know, moving forward. Now, um, after you've taken an application with your driver, this is for, for trucking companies um, and recruiters. If I have any recruiters on here, this next step is probably the most important part of the, the climb process. Make contact throughout the whole process, throughout the hiring process, because the application has been submitted and now it's a waiting game. So you're waiting on your insurance to get back to you. You're waiting on that report to be ran. You're waiting on, you know, whatever it is that you're waiting on, because we've lost so many drivers by not um, following up by not uh, getting back to them in a timely manner. Because like I said earlier, drivers have so many options, okay? There's 15 trucking jobs to every one driver, maybe more, okay? So it's very important that you maintain contact. Your follow through has to be very, very strong. Um, you know, and what we do, we text the driver, you know, you know, I'll take, once I do the application, I'll text them. Okay. So the next steps I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on your reports to be ran. I'm waiting on, um, you know, the insurance to get back to me. We're working on your driver qualification file. We're doing this, we're doing that, like maintaining contact, keeping them updated throughout the whole process because somebody else is calling their phone. Somebody else is texting them. Somebody else might be emailing them. They might still be looking. You have to maintain that contact. Um, and then the, um, and then after the, you know, the driver is, uh, uh, you know, he goes through the process, he gets approved, he get, you know, you, you're ready to bring him in. Then you set up the travel, you set up everything. And this stuff needs to be, um, in writing. So, you know, I have a carrier, I just did, um, you know, got their driver, they start on the 24th. And so we set up um, their travel. We help them with their travel itinerary. So the driver has a piece of paper and it's got, okay, um, 
on Monday. Okay, I'll talk about that here in just a second. The main, the daily, the bi weekly. Okay, so, um, but we just did one a travel itinerary, and um, it's got the driver. You start on this date. This is your, um, you know, this is how you're going to get there. This is what time you need to be there when you get to the hotel. This is where you need to check in. Um, you know, this is what day one's going to look like. Day two, you know. Um, OJT, whatever it is that you're going to do. Um, and like I said earlier, don't just drop the keys in the driver hand when they get to, you know, when they get to your truck. Do more. OK, you got to go through policies and procedures. You got to talk about your company. What you know, there's more that you need to do, like I said, because the driver is accustomed to a certain standard of pre-employment, a certain standard of orientation. It's not just here, here go the keys and go, let's go. OK, there's so much more to that, uh, that process. Um, how often should you maintain contact? So maintain contact. So we follow up with our drivers at least every day or every other day. It just depends on how long it takes. So we have carriers that I put the application in today, but tomorrow I'll know if they get approved. And then by Monday, they're in orientation. All right. So it just depends on how long your process is going to take. If your process takes a week, you're going to lose that driver. All right. So you, you drivers, if they're looking and they're ready to go, they're ready to go. They're not waiting two and three weeks. Um, some of them are, you know, wanting to do the right thing and give a, you know, a two week um you know, a two week notice or, you know, a three week notice, but the majority of drivers are ready to start within the next week. So it's imperative that um, your truck is ready. It is imperative that, you know, all the paperwork and everything has been done so that your truck can get on the road when the driver gets there. Um, and then if the driver gets there and there's delays or if they have, you know, if the, the, there's some maintenance that needs to be done, you're wasting their time. OK, you're wasting the driver's time because there have been so many instances where I've had drivers call me um, because they either sit in a hotel or they broke down on the side of the road. Um, and if a driver is not moving, they're not making any money. OK, and they're not your friend. OK. They are there for a um, for a, a weekly settlement. OK, that's why they're there. Um, but then, like I said, the last thing, the bring it on home, the, big, the bring it on home and multiply. So you get that driver in the orientation. Um, you want to make sure that you get a. a you know, you get pictures, you get whatever you can so that you can go back and put it back on that social media channel that I was telling you about. You put it back on social media so that they can go and tell their friends about the good news about your company. OK, so when it's time to get another truck, all you got to do is put on social media and say, hey, I got another truck. Um, who, who's ready? Who's ready? Who's ready to get in my next truck? Um, 8 p.m. on an exact. Yes. Sundays are great times to um, to advertise. Sundays are, are, are really good times to advertise because um, drivers are just chilling. They're just chilling on Sundays and and getting ready for getting ready for Monday. Um, they're coming off of their 34, their 34 hour reset. Um, just a couple of things I want to leave you guys with um, how to get keep your drivers happy. All right. We deal with a lot, a lot of carriers um, who who lose drivers because they're just not happy. Um, the big thing that drivers complain about is being paid, being paid on time, um, being paid consistently, like having like, you know, not getting paid eight hundred dollars one week or, or five hundred dollars one week. And then, you know, a thousand the next week, like consistency is key. Um, and that goes with that planning that goes with planning the loads and things like that so that you know what um, what is it, what that driver should expect. And the driver needs to know what they expect. Um, pay pay. If you do percent of the load, anything under 30% in today's market, I'm going to say 30. 
it, a, a while back, it was like 25, 26, 27, but 30 percent. If you're not paying 30 percent, your driver can go pet and work somewhere else. Matter of fact, I got a job that they can um, work work at and, and make good money. Um, but you got to be up there. OK, you got to be up there. You need to figure out a way to get um, to, to get the driver in and not just in your post. Don't just say 30 percent. You need to say 30 percent and you'll average such and such amount each week. OK, you'll average this each week. If you can add minimum pay on there, um, that's crucial because they can set their clock by that fifteen hundred dollars a week or that two thousand, whatever you're going to pay. OK, they can set their clock by that. So pay is very important. The other thing is keep your equipment running, keep your equipment running. And then if it's not running, have a backup plan, have a backup plan, whether you are using um, contingency plans in place, whether you're using Ryder or Penske or somebody to rent, um, rent a truck, truck a down, whatever you're using, have a backup plan in place so that the driver is never sitting. And when they sit, you want them to be sitting at the shipper um, to pick up the load um, or, or, or drop off the load. That's the only time you want your driver to be sitting on they, you know, they, they reset and stuff like that. Um, and care. OK, one of our core values of our company is we give a damn. OK, you have to be able to treat your drivers as if they are human beings. OK, not as if, you know, it's just somebody out here moving, moving your truck, moving loads. OK, check in with them. Um, it's it's I posted some on my Instagram the other day and it was driver appreciation. OK. Take the time out of your busy day, okay? Because if somebody's out there moving your truck, take the time out of your busy day once a month, okay? What's once a month? And say, hey, driver, I want to thank you for your hard work. I want to thank you for your dedication to our company. Um, I'm going to buy you lunch today. Where you at? You should already know where they at. Um, and I'm going to send a pizza. What kind of pizza do you like? I'm going to send a pizza over to the truck, Okay. That is, yes, gift cards, that stuff works wonders. It goes a long way because let me tell you something. They're going to call a homeboy. They're going to say, girl, um, my boss bought me pizza today. What y'all doing? Oh, we just over here eating McDonald's. Um, but that stuff goes a long way. Just think back. Okay, so think back to that one company that you worked for that, you know, you really, really like maybe it wasn't the company. Maybe it was a one that one boss. OK, that one supervisor that really, you know, just like stood out there that that was that was um, had your back or, you know, that they really cared. that really showed that they cared about you because I know it's one. You got one in your career somewhere. So think back to to them and what they did and how they made you feel different. And that's exactly how drivers want to feel, because when you at home with your family, they on the road with your truck. And when you are, you know, hanging out um, or, you know, going to bed at night in your bed, they sleep in a truck. OK, so those are things that you need to think about. We lose sight of that because we get in the operation and we get busy with the day to day. And I'm trying to get the lows and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Stop and think about that driver. Set it on your alarm clock. I don't care what you got to do. Put it on your alarm clock once a week. Driver talk, you know, check in with a driver, send a driver a lunch, send them a gift card. What's fifty dollars? OK, send them a fifty dollar Walmart card and say, hey, go, go buy some toiletries, go whatever you need for this month. Go ahead and buy it. Here, here go an extra fifty dollars. That goes a long way. OK, um, I hope this was helpful. I hope this um, information, guys, was beneficial because, look, I know I can go all day long <laughs> talking about this. <laughs> I love it. It's it's good information. I just want to kind of add on again from the insurance perspective in regards to hiring and I'm trying to move over to the right place. There we go. <laughs> um, real quickly, just like we said, hiring is a process. It's not mm -hmm. just, 
you you are grabbing someone, putting them behind the wheel. You hadn't vetted them. You haven't checked them because there's legal implications in that. So getting someone uh, that's a good fit, that's, you know, definitely part of that process. But then there's a process a legal process afterwards. So yeah. I just want to remind all our owner operators, you know, people who are hiring drivers, don't forget the process. Don't sling a driver's license to your insurance company and be like, yeah, just check that out. Yes. So just, <laughs> you, you want to be, just remember when you were working and applying for a job, what if everyone did that? Because your employer's overhead doesn't really have a direct correlation with whether or not they should hire you. Now, yes, they need to know your background, but let that be your background, not mm -hmm. how much they have to pay because they have to pay it anyway. You as an owner operator, if you want a driver, you're going to have to pay anyway. Mm -hmm. So I understand that there's some sensitivities in there to where, you know, experience counts. I get it, but let's treat people like people go through a due process because you can get sued behind that process as well. You are now employers. And so you fall under that umbrella. Um, if you're not, if you don't have a workers comp policy, certain states, really most states, you're going to have to advise your, your workers, employees or contractors. You're going to have mm -hmm. to say, this is what my company has and doesn't have. So let's not forget that. But I love this presentation. It needs to be from that authentic place of care because it comes back. It has a, a direct dollar amount influence as that variant. And I think that's so awesome. I hear stories about that. And I can't think of what that company is in Houston, actually, mm. that every Christmas, they're not a trucking company. Um, every Christmas, they're like giving $20,000 bonuses and stuff. Wow. Yeah, so people don't that's leave. <laughs> yeah. People don't leave. Yeah. And so I, I love that because around Christmas, you'll see the stories of the things they're doing, bonuses, you know, financial bonuses, helping people. Mm -hmm. They've bought cars for loyal employees mm -hmm. wow. and so many people just stay with them and I would too <laughs> stay with them because you feel that connection. Yes. You know, when someone cares and this is that whole real quickly, the background on just, um, you, you, it doesn't have to always be financial. When someone believes in your vision, believes in you and yeah. thinks and feels that you have their back as well, you can actually get away with, um, with some things financially. It doesn't have to be a dollar for dollar match. Oh, they're paying $50. I got to pay 51 to get them. If they like you and they trust you because, okay, today I can't pay you 51, but look, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm going to get lined up. And then tomorrow let's get you 52, you yeah. know? And so you yeah. have to have that confidence in your own company before mm -hmm. you ask someone else to have that confidence in your mm -hmm. company. And would you agree, Ms. Jerry, that's like yeah. the biggest difference between these large companies getting drivers and the smaller companies mm -hmm. is that level of confidence. When you're just starting out, they're looking at you like you just started here, too. Exactly. What makes you think you can pay me? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And we hear that all too often. Um, and, and there's a... Um, you know, and a lot of drivers are, are not wanting to work for small carriers because of those reasons. Um, and, and so we're having to and that's why we do we do an extensive vetting, you know, on who we even carrier wise, who we even decide to work with, because everybody's not at that level. Everybody's not ready to play and be in this game, in in the trucking game. Because I have people paying, you know, drivers, you know, cash app. They're not getting check stubs or, you know, weekly settlements and things like that. I can't deal, you know, with, with those situations. I won't put a driver and their family's livelihood in a situation where they may or may not eat next week. Because most drivers, a lot of them are living paycheck to paycheck. And so it's important that my company, my 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 upbringing won't even let me do that, you know. Right? So that's that's important to me that I'm working with the carriers that are set up correctly 
before we even move forward. So we do an extensive onboarding. I'm, I'm so glad you said that too. And in closing, and then I'd like for you to talk more about the university, but um, I see that on the insurance side too. If you think that you running through people and that sounded kind of rough and raw, <laughs> but that's almost, I mean, that's, that's what that is. You're running yeah. through people yeah. when you don't have a steady driver. Doesn't impact your bottom line. Your insurance company, because you're flipping them, sees that. That's instability in management. You know, why would you go somewhere? And we do that in other businesses too. Why would you go somewhere that you constantly see a new face? People don't want that. And that's not a good representation of your company. So please think about that new carriers. I get it, you're new. That's not the kiss of death. Because yes. that actually, if you talk to, as you talk to other drivers and I'm tell, you know, telling them, hey, so-and-so's looking and such and such, um, they almost have an admiration for you as an owner operator for stepping out there and yes. doing what they're preparing yes. to do. Mm -hmm. So being new is not that kiss of death, but you have to have a level of transparency and realness to you. If you get in and you start nickeling and diamond, you don't have stuff in order. They pick up on that real fast. Like you said, to follow up with somebody, that's just decent courtesy. But yeah. if you're not doing that, they're thinking, am I going to have to chase you down for money? Because I, I ain't got time for that. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so great presentation, Ms. Jerry. Um, and, I, and I think we all kind of know that fundamentally. But to hear it and to even hear it from that driver's seat. Uh, we need to be reminded of it. So please tell us about your university for someone who's looking at getting into this field and just, you know, this is something you can add on as a dispatcher. You can yes. transition into this solely because there's some good money to be made. I'm gonna yes. Let you know it. yes. So we have a, um, it's Life on the Road Recruiting University and I'll have a lot of drop the links as well. Um, but basically it's a start your own truck driver recruiting agency course. Um, and, you know, you go through, you can go through the course. It's a self-paced course. Um, that course will give you all the tools that you need, all of our um our actual tools that we use, contracts that we use. Um, there's offer letters, there's documents, like everything that you need to get started is there. Um, you know, any any um, services that we use, it's all in that particular course. That is for anyone that is wanting to add a, um, recruiting to their business model or open a recruiting agency. Um, that course is for you. Now, we do have on our website, we have some educational components for trucking carriers that um, we do like a two hour educational session or a two hour, um, two hour one on one. That's that's what it is. It's not a group setting. It's a one on one where we go through with you and teach you how to do this. Um, as well as um, I, I did condense like a lot of information. It's very, you know, it's very, um, it's it's thorough, but it's it's brief as well. But there's a digital product that we have um, as well. And that product's $47 um, product. And basically it's our top seven ways that methods that we use, I only went through a few of them here, um, but our top seven ways that we use to find truck drivers also um, in there is our offer letter that we that we um, that we utilize our qualifying questions that's in there um, as well as. Um, Oh God, what else? Oh, the climb method that's in there. It's like a phone script type, you know, thing. So we've come, I've combined like everything um, and put it in a package. So we'll share those links as well with you. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in uh, recruiting our uh, Life on the Road Recruiting University, it's definitely a, uh, a great start. We do that course. When you purchase that course, included in that is a one hour uh, one on one strategy session where I just kind of see where you are, see where you're going and um, just share um, share, you know, some of my points and, and tools and, and things like that. Awesome. Awesome. I did recruiting for about six years. I mean, it's a lot to learn, but the best way to learn is to get in there and do it. And if you don't think the need is out there, just check the group. 
you have people asking all the time. The difference mm -hmm. in someone's time and money is how much do you want to spend on which side? There you, go. If you want to do it yourself. Hey, we're not saying it's rocket science and stuff, but does it take time? Yes. Authentically, it takes time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can set up all those those hooks that's what we call them because we always say good hunting and good fishing in the recruiting world and so you could set up all those things but to set it up if you're really hiring every so often kind of puts your resources now on a different thing you're not in the business to hire you're mm -hmm. in the business to keep your business going mm -hmm. and so go ahead and connect with a professional that can do that that has a database that has those things already going so you don't have to reinvent the wheel i think so many times we're like oh but it costs it costs it, it does, does. Cost. Uh, but I, it's going to cost your time exactly <laughs> it's going to cost your time and i can share you know our 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 costs um from a recruiting perspective it varies um large carriers and and this you know is something that you need to consider when you're reaching out to a recruiter large carriers are paying for truck drivers in this climate okay they're paying anywhere from you know 3500 to five thousand dollars a driver this is large carriers i mean like a, a us express a cr england those carriers they're paying it Okay. Let me let me pause on that. Go I need ahead. you to re say that because I think they think that's how much they're paying as far as you have to, you know, that's what they're well they, it is, but kind of rephrase that so they understand that that's what you get as a commission as, as a commission. A, as a commission for a recruiter. That is what I, I get as a recruiter. For every driver that I hire, for example, um, and, and it, this may decrease as the whole hiring thing opens up, but from um, last October up until today, you I'm just going to give you one carrier. U.S. Express pays us $5,000 per driver. Wow. You're getting paid yeah, because I always have to like rephrase that because it's like I, I get excited because, look, I'm halfway thinking, hmm, let me <laughs> let me try to do this recruiting thing, too. But it is you have to you have to get into it. You have to really get into it. But you're getting paid to get someone else paid is, is what that is. You're exactly. getting paid That's to exactly help what that people. Is be in a stable environment to use their skills, talent, and their love to support their families. You're getting paid, you're saying three to five thousand dollars per person. How many people do you know? How many people uh, and there's no cap on that, right? Mm -mm. There's no cap on yeah. that. You guys, if you're not excited, <laughs> there's no cap on that. And that's just one carrier, she said. That's I mean, incredible. how many big carriers do you work with? I work with about 50 large carriers, five zero. 50. Yes. Five zero. If you can't find this person a job, <laughs> you know, not saying that they're not, you can't work with them, but that's, that's the beauty and the finessing and all this. But that opportunity, 50 yes. big carriers, look yes. at all the small carriers that will pay you a, a pretty handsome penny. Now, mm -hmm. I don't, see it as being the 5,000 because, you know, they're more budget. Yeah, no, our, our small carriers, our range is anywhere from, you know, 18 to, you know, 3,500, depending on what they're needing. They're needing. Exactly. Um, there's a lot of factors that we take into consideration. Now, um, a lot of my recruit, like, for example, I have, you know, people that have gone through the course and, um, some will come and work. I don't take everyone under my agency. You don't just buy the course and automatically get to come and work under our agency. There's certain, you know, criteria and things that we, you know, kind of go through. But um, there are like I have one lady right now who's gone through the course. She's we've had our strategy session. She's actually found the contacts and she needs to go to and she's already secured contracts with some of these larger carriers um she's doing very very well um, um and so you know just taking that that initiative to go out and say hey i have my recruiting agency i can get you drivers and and that's exactly what she's you know i think she's. that's a great point you bring too because you can contract with these yes. larger companies. And that's what we do. That's what we do. Right. It can be something you're learning here. You can contract and work from wherever. Mm -hmm. You know, again, you're talking to people 
via phone, internet, um, emails, text messaging, as Ms. Jerry said. So you don't have to show up to all these locations because that, that's actually the beauty of working in this yeah. transportation field. Yeah. They're moving. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. So please consider this. Um, just think about it. Like you said, pray over it. But this is an opportunity because I'll tell you now, I've seen other recruiting courses First of all, trucking recruiting is its own animal. I'm just going to yes. say that. Yes. You can't just say recruiting is recruiting because, yeah, every little industry has a different way yes. in which you um, find candidates. Mm -hmm. Secondly, mm -hmm. you don't find too many trucking recruiting <laughs> uh, programs that will teach you the ground up, give you what you need to really start this off on your own. Mm -hmm. So check mm -hmm. it out. Um, the website is streaming across here. It's also in the group. Check out the links, connect with myself or Ms. Jerry for more information. If you're still like, oh, what's this about? What's this about? Connect with us. We'll definitely give you the tools you need to get started and be more educated on here. But thank you for your time, Ms. Jerry. I appreciate it. So this will be shared. So it's going to be on our YouTube. It's going to be, um, I'll share the video too, On if you want to share on your YouTube. Her YouTube is awesome. That's actually how I found you. I saw oh, really? some, I, I Googled and I found you and I loved your energy. And I, I see that, you know, you knew what you were talking about. And so I was just like, let me reach out. Let me see what you're doing and oh, stuff. So um, check you. it out if you haven't checked it out already. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. I appreciate it. And so we'll catch you next time. If you want to be live on here as well, just reach out. We'll give you some time um, to share your expertise and talents with our group and also with the world of, you know, logistics and transportation. We need to know it. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.